Hello, hello, and welcome to my video game sound design series on Absinthe. My name is Akash Thakar, and in this video, we're going to start diving in to the patch view inside of Absinthe. Now, when I was preparing this video, I realized that there are probably going to be a lot of basics videos because this synth is way, way more intense than massive. Both are really complicated, but this one is very different from every other synth that's out there in some ways, whereas Massive is a pretty straightforward wavetable synthesizer, even if it looks intimidating. So we're going to dive into this patch view. We're going to stay here for a little while. Then we'll go into every other window, and I'll show you how to make cool sounds and all that sort of good stuff. So inside of Absinthe, we have this patch view, and this is where the bulk of our sound is made. So we have our choice of having three oscillators, similar to Massive, and we can turn those on and off by clicking on the left-hand side here. And also, each of these oscillators can be fed into a filter, which you can turn on and off again by clicking the left-hand side, and some sort of modulation parameter. And then those effects can go into these master wave shapers and filters and effects. And all three of them can combine, all three of these channels can combine to create something really, really neat and really cool. So in this video, we're going to focus just on the oscillators, just this top row here. So I'm going to hit File, New Sound, just to give us something completely blank. So right here, we have an oscillator, and we can have up to three, like I mentioned. So right away, we see that we have a wave shape, we have a few modes that we can play with. So the first thing you want to do when you're making a sound is check out all of these different modes. There's all of these here. Single is the most simple, and they get more and more complicated as they go on. And there's a last one, which is pretty cool and pretty unique to Absinthe, which isn't a oscillator in and of itself. It doesn't generate sound, but it's an audio in, meaning you can actually record or play sound into Absinthe and have it affect it, which is really cool. So you can make some unique sounds through your voice or through your guitar or whatever audio you want to put into here. It's really cool. So we'll start with the single oscillator, which is the simplest one. So if I just play something now, it'll be a straightforward everyday sine wave. Nothing that crazy, nothing special. So there's our sine wave. Now let's look at how we can kind of play around with this. So first up, where it says sine right here, we can click that and we can get a whole bunch of waveforms to choose from. So we have a whole bunch of choices, all of them sound different. You'll have to play around with these to memorize what they sound like because frankly, knowing what inharmonic one sounds like from the top of your head takes a while. Then there are other columns. You can go to simple waves. There's morph waves, which are a little more complicated. And library waves, which are just some waves that come with Absinthe. So they all have their own unique sound. They do get more and more complicated as you switch between these tabs. But playing around with them will give you a good idea of what they all sound like. And it's really fun to play with these and edit them or open up a preset and play with it and all that sort of good stuff. So let's say I choose just this one right here. Just a standard waveform here. I'll just click OK. We can hear that the sound is different. Now you can also audition waveforms by clicking where we just were and then just choosing waveforms and playing notes on your keyboard. Now, you may be thinking that these sound really simple or kind of stupid, and that's okay. We're going to affect these, and we're going to make these sound crazier and crazier as this series goes on. So we'll stick with this vocal one that I found in Library Waves. And now, just to introduce it to you, we have a pitch shifting mode. So what we can do is shift our pitch with four different modes. And our first one over here is called Trans or Transposition, and that's the most popular. That's the one you'll probably be using the most. So in transposition, it's basically telling you how many semitones you're going to transpose your sound by. So if I play a middle C on my keyboard right now, it plays a middle C. But if I turn it up one by going to this very left number and turning it up to one, just by clicking and typing that in, now it's C sharp. So if I play a middle C, it'll play a C sharp because it's transposing it up by one semitone. And of course, you can drag these kind of diamonds up and down as faders, basically, to pitch up and down. You can get in between pitches really nicely and easily. 
and the further away these diamonds are is the more fine-tuned control you'll get. So now it's all sorts of out of tune. We won't worry about phase for now. That really only applies to more complex types of oscillators, beyond, double and beyond. But basically what this determines, this button determines between phase and free is where in the waveform you want to start. So if I click this free mode and I press this C, middle C and let go, and I press it again, it's gonna start in that waveform where I left off. And again, we'll cover this later if that's confusing. Don't worry, we'll cover that when we get to double and FM and all that sort of stuff. Also, this number right here next to phase determines where in our waveform we wanna start. So if it's at zero, we'll start at the beginning. If it goes up to 999, it'll be all the way at the end of the waveform. And you can kind of play around with that. Again, when we start making sounds, we'll dive more into it. And in this video, I also want to introduce double to you. So I'm gonna introduce single and double and we'll go further and further in future videos. So double works very similarly to single, except we have two oscillators, or sorry, two waveforms playing at the same time. So one oscillator is playing two waveforms. So the new option we have here is this mod view up here. So this mod tab wasn't available in single, it is available in double. So in our mod view, we can now choose a second waveform that will play at the same time as the first one in the main tab. And this second waveform also has its own pitch shifting. So you can pitch shift that as you see fit. It has its own phase, so you can play around with that. So you can make things sound real silly if you want to, combining two waveforms at the same time. Now, to get into it just a little bit, with these pitch shifting modes, we have transposition, which we just covered. We have ratio, which will basically determine what our frequency is by whatever we're playing. And then determining, based on our ratio, is how much higher the pitch will be. So if I hit two, it'll be twice as high. So it'll be an octave higher. So let me enter two here. Oh, I have a randomizer on there, which is why it's pitching a little weird. And if I turn it all the way down to one again using this fader here, it's a little finicky. And you can hear that one part of this isn't pitch shifting, and that's because in this double mod view, this second waveform is actually pitch shifted differently from the first. So if you want to keep them consistent, you'll have to tab back and forth between these two to make sure that they're the same pitch. Lastly, I want to show you this unison tab. And this is basically how many voices you want to play at the same time. So similar to Massive, we have this kind of effect where we can have one voice playing or up to eight at any given time. So if I turn this all the way up to eight, the sound will change very drastically. So what's happening is it's taking this sound that we made, then multiplying it by eight, and then in this transposition column here, or row here, it's pitch shifting them by 0 0.05, whatever that means, all between itself. So it's not all in tune. If I make this all the same pitch, it's just playing eight of the exact same note. But if I use this transposition row, I can actually make it so that each of these eight voices are out of tune with one another, or in tune, depending on what you want. So all 12 of these, or sorry, all eight of these are 12 randomly off from one another. And also random, what this does is it randomly pitches our voices each and every time. So I'm gonna play the same note over and over and you're gonna hear the pitch change between each note. So I'm just playing the same C over and over and the pitch is changing each time and that's what the randomizer can do. So it's very cool. You can get some neat sound design with that already. You can hear that we don't have a pitched musical sound at all, and especially when we send it through effects, we can get cool ambiences, really, really, really useful user interface effects using Absinthe, and all sorts of good stuff. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In our next video, I'll cover more of these oscillators and all that sort of good stuff, dive more into all of these modes. 
But for now, if you like this video, please subscribe, like the video, comment, all that sort of good stuff. I read all of my comments. I usually respond to all of them too. And also, if you want a career in the game industry, sign up for my newsletter. That's where I share all of my best stuff for those of you who want a full-time career that pays you well in the game industry. So sign up regardless of your discipline. I have info for you. So sign up and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.